Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to today's video on this Friday, uh, March the 11th. I hope you're having a great day so far. And uh, thank you for tuning in to today's video. Um, I just want to make a little quick announcement as we begin that um, we have today's video and then there are only three more to go after this one. That'll be next week. And we will be completely done with this tournament. Um, I hope it's been such a blessing to you. Uh, you've been a blessing to us by participating. And so um, I'm excited to see how this comes to an end throughout the next uh, week. So we are studying, as you know, the most inspirational church of the New Testament. We're looking at all the different churches from the different cities of the New Testament. And we're now down to the last video of the second round. As you can see, today we'll be looking at the church of Ephesus, which we know as the Ephesians, the book of Ephesians in the Bible, and the church of Smyrna, which is found in uh, Revelation chapter 2. I'd like to begin with a little update. Now, um, if you were able to watch our last video, it was supposed to have been on Wednesday. We had to uh, postpone it till uh, yesterday on Thursday. So folks, um, this video actually is not done with voting. So I'm going to give you a little update on the percentages, but I know of several folks that have not been able to vote yet. So uh, what I'm going to show you is not an official end result. We're going to let the voting on yesterday's video go through Saturday, okay? But currently we have Thessalonica with 33% and Jerusalem with 67%. Now, folks, I know that looks like a big lead for Jerusalem, but, um, but I can tell you that uh, that can change. So uh, I'm not uh, putting a check next to them. That's not official yet. Uh, on Monday's video, I will announce the winner of that one and the winner of today's. So let's go ahead and jump right in to our first church we're going to study today, and it is the Church of Ephesus. Okay, and folks, I just want to point out the number two next to their name. That means they are the number two rank of the tournament, and they're ranked that high for a reason. Uh, only Jerusalem is ranked higher than them in this tournament. Now, ultimately, those rankings do not mean anything. That doesn't mean they're going to win uh, or anything like that. But uh, that just shows you how famous they are, that they are ranked number two. Um, now, just very, very quickly, a couple of reminders about this church. We've already learned from the first round, they were one of the many churches established by the Apostle Paul. But, folks, this one is probably the most famous of all the ones that he started. Um, you know, uh, this church, uh, the Apostle Paul, as you know, as he traveled around to the different cities, he normally did not stay very long. He would stay a little while, a few months, and help the church get started. He stayed here for two or three years, folks. And you're going to learn in today's video, actually we've already talked about it in round one, but he sent his best man to be the pastor of this church. Um, so this is a special spot for Paul. It was one of the best churches in the early church, okay? So, and of course he wrote the letter of the book of Ephesians to them, one of the most famous of the letters of the New Testament, okay? Has such wonderful things written in that, in that book, wonderful book. Um, so, what is the personality of this church? Well, this was kind of a tough one, folks, because when you read the story of this church, um, when you read their story, you realize how special they are. Um, they seem very mature. They seem very solid. Um, you don't see many weaknesses in these people. Now, that's not saying they were perfect, because, folks, we do know eventually in Revelation chapter 2, they have 
some problems, okay, which almost every one of these churches had uh, the same type problems. But, um, but when I look at this church, you know, I don't see a lot of big flashy things. So it's kind of hard for me to give one word to describe them, but I see a church that is strong, okay? I'm going to say that their personality is strong. Now, I feel that I must explain what this means, okay? Now, of course, we're not talking about physically strong, okay? You know what I'm saying as far as... Uh, the way we think of muscles and energy and stuff, please understand, um, if you're looking at this and you say, well, Brother Scott, I, I don't feel very uh, relatable to them, okay? Please understand, strong does not mean that they were hardcore and, you know, uh, uh, that they, they weren't good-hearted, heartwarming people. It means they were a strong unit. They were a strong group, okay? They were very solid in their beliefs and following the Lord, okay? I mean, think about it. Paul himself started this place and stayed there for two or three years. Now, who do they compare closely to of all the churches we've seen? Well, this one was pretty easy for me. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I believe they compare to a church that has already advanced to the third round of the tournament, and that is the Church of Rome. And I'll tell you why. Okay? I, I say that they compare to Rome for two reasons. I believe they compare to Rome because if you remember, folks, Rome, their personality was firm. If you remember that from the previous videos, they were firm. They were just like this Ephesus church, okay? They were very well trained. They were firm in their beliefs. They were firm in following the ways of God. And I see that in Ephesus being strong, basically the same word. But also, the book of Ephesians written to the church of Ephesus and the book of Romans written to Rome are very similar. They're not letters written to correct the people of their sins and their fault going astray. Both of these churches were very solid, and not that they were perfect, okay, but they both were um, doing very well. And the books written to them are very powerful books. Uh, book of Romans, book of Ephesians, wonderful writings. Okay, now folks, one of my favorite things about the Church of Ephesus, you're going to love in this video today, the pastors of both churches. I'm going to tell you, this is a big video today, because boy, do they have special pastors. And the pastor of Ephesus is a very special young man in the Bible named Timothy. Timothy, okay? Now, we learned that back in round one. Please listen closely, uh, if you will. Uh, the Apostle Paul spent a lot of time there, as we said. Okay, two or three years. Folks, that's not typical. He normally didn't stay that long in these churches. I think Paul may have had a desire to be in this church long term. But folks, God had another plan for Paul. So Paul wanted to send somebody to them to be the pastor the leader of these people, and he said about Timothy that there is no man like-minded to me than Timothy. Timothy thought like Paul thought. Remember, he called him my son in the faith. He was a young man who eventually became, towards the end of the New Testament, one of the biggest leaders in all of Christianity of that time. So Timothy, very beloved young man, and folks, what verse do I think describes them the best? Well, this is kind of an interesting one. I have found a verse that is literally in the book of Ephesians, which is the letter written to them. And I think this verse describes them very well. And it has to do with being strong. If you know your Bible, Ephesians chapter 6 
talks about the armor of God. And there's a verse that says, be strong in the Lord. And I think that's describing the Ephesian church. That scripture, folks, is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Okay? And you'll recognize it if you look at it in your Bible. That is the passage talking about the armor of God. Okay? Paul told them, be strong in the Lord. So this is the first time, folks, in this tournament that I've literally picked a verse that literally was spoken to this church, okay? Generally, I just find a verse in the Bible that sounds like them, you know? This is them. Be strong in the Lord. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to the second church today, and that is the church of Smyrna. Now, you may say, Brother Scott, I don't know much about them. I you, you know, you don't hear much about them. Church of Ephesus is very famous. This is a very famous church here. The Church of Smyrna is kind of overlooked a lot. But folks, you see number seven. They're pretty high in this tournament, but I believe they're special. And I definitely think they have an opportunity today to possibly receive more votes than Ephesus. However, same as Ephesus, I think they may get more votes. This could be a close one. The Church of Smyrna, just to remind you folks, they're one of the seven churches found in Revelation 2 and 3. They were founded by the Apostle John, a very special man as well. Okay? They were one of only two to get a good report. Remember, John wrote letters to those churches in Revelation 2 and 3, it was actually a letter from the Lord, but John wrote it, okay? And uh, they had a very good pastor as well, a man very similar to Timothy. I love both of these pastors today in these churches, okay? And uh, so here we go. Personality. What personality fits the Church of Smyrna? Well, folks, we only really get that one passage of Scripture in Revelation chapter 2 about them. But we actually see a very good report. Actually, of the seven, two got a good report, but they probably got the best one of all seven. Jesus was well pleased with this church. They had been existing for about 30 or 40 years at this point, and they were doing spectacular but the, the amazing thing is they were being persecuted so badly. Folks, persecution, we've seen that in this tournament so much. Every church, even Ephesus had it, okay? Persecution. This church had it terribly bad. And uh, Jesus basically told this church in the letter that they were going to suffer. He told them, do not fear it. Just know that I'm doing a great thing in you. Okay, this is just me paraphrasing. But I see this church willing to be sacrificial, folks. So that is my personality for them. And I'll explain. The Church of Smyrna, I believe their personality was sacrificial. Okay, now, folks, that's a, that's a great word, okay? That's a great word to describe a church. Now, please remember, that does not mean Ephesus was not sacrificial, okay? And this doesn't mean that Smyrna is not strong. I just think this word best fits this church, okay? When you read their story in Revelation 2, they were willing. They had been willing to... Suffer for the Lord. Ephesus was the same way, but Jesus really bragged on this church here because they were dealing with a lot of persecution. They weren't complaining. They were staying committed, and they literally were willing to sacrifice their life even, their time on earth, their energy and everything for the cause of God. Okay? 
sacrificial. Now, who do they compare closely to? Well, this is a very easy one for me. Revelation 2 and 3, we've already talked about it. Seven churches, two got a good report, very similar report, and that is the church of Philadelphia. Okay? The church of Philadelphia. You know, folks, the amazing thing is, Church of Philadelphia, as you can see over here, has already advanced to the third round, okay? We may see both of those, if Smyrna wins this video, in the final four, okay? All right, that's an easy comparison. They both got similar reports from Jesus in Revelation 2 and 3. Who was the pastor? Well, folks, we talked about this in round one. It is so amazing. It's just like the story of Ephesus. Remember, Paul started that church. He put his best man there, Timothy. Well, John, the apostle, started this church, and I believe he influenced his best young man, the disciple that he was training, to go there. Just like Paul and Timothy, John sent his young man, his name was Polycarp. Okay? Now, folks, we talked about Polycarp in round one. Uh, many people don't know who he is, but I'm telling you, after the apostles, Peter, Paul, James, John, when those guys died, there was a next group that came along who became the top leaders of Christianity of their day. This guy was one of them, Polycarp. Had the Bible have continued another couple decades, you would, have, you would clearly know the name Polycarp. He was John's disciple. And the last thing I want to say, folks, is the verse. What verse describes the church of Smyrna? Well, this is kind of easy. I got to looking at their personality, how they suffered a lot, and they were willing to go through that, okay, as were most of these churches. And I got to thinking about a verse where the scripture says that the sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us in heaven. And that scripture is Romans 8.18. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Okay? That verse talks about the sufferings of this life, like this church felt are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed to us in heaven. So, folks, that is today's video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Two wonderful churches. Folks, there is no right and wrong answer. Which one inspires you more? Okay, they have similar stories. You see the Paul-Timothy, you know, connection. You see the John and Polycarp connection, okay? Sacrificial, this church, very strong, solid following the Lord. Uh, my goodness, you can't go wrong in this one. I hope you've enjoyed. Please cast your vote for the winner of today's video. Comment on the YouTube video, or you can message me or my wife your answer. And I hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you next week. We only have three videos to go. Hope you'll tune in on Monday as we start round three. Till then, please have a great day, great weekend. We'll see you next time. God bless you.